So let's say we have this positive one Coulomb charge. Then we know if we have this positive one Coulomb charge, we have this region in space that's high in electric potential. And in the last video, we learned about the definition of electric potential. So I have a link of that video below. I highly recommend you watch that first. But again, let's say we have this positively charged Coulomb particle. So now we have a region of high electric potential, and now the farther away we get from this region, the lower the electric potential. So here we have high electric potential, high positiveness. Here we have lower electric potential, lower positiveness. Here we have even less electric potential, less positiveness, and here we would have very low electric potential. So we see here we have high electric potential of region in space that's high in positiveness, but the farther we go away, the lower the electric potential becomes. And now this region in space is low in electric potential. So exactly how do we determine the magnitude of the electric potential maybe right here? And how do we determine the magnitude of the electric potential maybe right here and etc.? Well, again, we just use a simple formula. For example, we have a positive one Coulomb charge and we want to find the electric potential in this region in space. How do we determine that? We just simply use this formula. And how do we determine the electric potential in this region in space? Again, just simply use the formula. In this region in space, we just use our simple formula. So now plugging in some values, let's see what we get. So again, we know K is just Coulomb's constant. It's just 9 times 10 to the 9 using SI units. So that's just a constant. Q represents the magnitude of the charge that's creating the electric potential. So remember, it's this positive one Coulomb charge that's creating the electric potential in all these regions. So therefore, that's important. We need to know the magnitude of that charge. So that's Q. So that's why it's in, in the formula that determines the electric potential because it's important. So that's, and we said it's a one Coulomb charge. And this R represents the distance. So again, here's that charge creating the electric potential and we're this distance away. So let's say this represents one meter. So let's say we're interested in the electric electric potential one meter away from a positive one Coulomb charge, how do we determine what the electric potential would be in this region? Again, just plug in our values and we would get our value. And what about, what if we're interested in the electric potential in this particular region? Again, we use Coulomb's constant. It's just a constant. I recommend you memorize. We know, need to know the magnitude of the charge creating the electric potential, and we need to know the distance. We're interested in three meters away, so we need to know that distance and plug it in. And now, again, we can do that for all these values and determine the electric potential in all these regions. So we know this region, plugging in our values, we have an electric potential of 9 times 10 to 9 joules per coulomb. And again, this region, we have this electric potential, and this region, we have this electric potential. So now we know, if we have this, this positively charged particle, we know this region in space is high in electric potential. It's high in positiveness. Then this region is lower in electric potential. This region's lower in et cetera. And the farther we get, the lower the electric potential becomes. So now what's going to happen if we throw in a charge? Well, we know whenever we have a region of electric potential and we throw in a positively charged particle, we'll get a system with energy in the form of electric potential energy. So for example, we said this region in space had this electric potential this amount of electric potential in this region of space. So what's gonna happen if we have a region in space with this amount of electric potential and we throw in a positive one Coulomb charge in that particular location? Well, again, we would just multiply those two values, the Coulombs will cancel and we'll get how much energy we have in the form of electric potential energy. And what about if we have this region in space with this electric potential? What's going to happen if we throw a positive one Coulomb charge in a region of space with this electric potential? Well, again, we can just multiply those two values and that will tell us how much energy is in the form of electrical potential energy when, when we put this, this charge in this location. We'll find out how much energy this, how much energy in the form of electrical potential energy we have in this system at the, when it's at that location. So again, we can just multiply the Coulombs will cancel for each of these particular values. And we, now we know. Now we know if we have a positive one Coulomb charge and we throw it in this particular region of that particular electric potential, we'll have a system with 9 times 10 to the 9 joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. And what if we have this region, which again, we already determined the electric potential. So what if we have this region with that particular electric potential and we throw a positive one Coulomb charge on that particular electric potential, then we'll have a system with this amount of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. And again, we're just, we're just multiplying the values and just plugging in and, that, and now we know. So again, that's one way you can look at this. That's one way when we have a positively charged particle, this is one way you can analyze things and think about it. But there's another way. There's another accurate way you can think about it. For example, if we have a positive one Coulomb charge, we know it's going to create an invisible electric field. We know all charges create electric fields. So they're going to create these invisible electric fields. 
But we know the farther away we get from the original charge, the weaker the electric field becomes. So here, the electric field's really strong. However, all the way down here, the electric field's weaker. And all the way back here, we have a very weak electric field. So how do we determine the magnitude of the electric field in this particular location? Well, again, we just simply use this formula, where r is squared, where r is squared. And then again, if you just plug in all those values, you can determine the magnitude of the electric field at this particular location. So again, k is just Coulomb's constant. Again, I recommend you just memorize it. Q represents the magnitude of the charge that's creating the electric field. So this is the charge that's creating the electric field. So it's important to know the magnitude of that charge. That's why it's in the formula, because it's important and it impacts the magnitude of the electric field. So again, we have a positive one Coulomb charge. And again, R represents the distance. So, so again, let's say this distance represents one meter. So now we know, if we know if we have a positive one Coulomb charge, if we're one meter away, we know that region will have this amount of electric potential. We just multiply all, all these terms, and then, and then we'll get the, the magnitude of the electric field. And we can do the same thing here, this exact same idea, and the same thing here. As long as we know the magnitude of the charge, and we know the distance, and again, remember that distance gets squared, then we can determine the magnitude of the electric field at this particular location. So again, if we were to multiply these values and, and cancel the units, we would now know this region in space has this electric field, an electric field with this magnitude. This region in space has an electric field with this magnitude, and this region in space has an electric field with this magnitude. And remember, these are vectors. These electric fields are vectors. And, and again, these are the units of the electric field, newtons per coulombs. And again, another way you can look at it is using these units. But again, if, if you analyze these carefully, you'll see they're, they're the same thing. So now we know the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field here. However, we know whenever we have an electric field, and we throw in a positively charged particle in that per region with that particular electric field, we get a force. And that's just something you need to memorize. Whenever we have an electric field and we throw in a charge in that electric field, we'll get a force. That charge will feel a force due to that electric field. What will be the magnitude of the force? So again, let's say we have this region in space with this particular electric field. And let's say we threw in a positively one Coulomb charge in that, that particular electric field, what will be the magnitude of the force that that charge will feel if it's in that particular electric field? Well, again, you just multiply the values. You would just multiply the values and you would see how the units would cancel and, and how the units would work. For example, we know the electric field at this particular location and we know the magnitude of the charge that we threw in, in that location. We just multiply them and the Coulombs will cancel. And now we'll get Newtons. And again, if you analyze these units very carefully with these K units and just analyze them, you, you'll get Newtons. And that's just something you just need to, need to be familiar with. Whenever you know the magnitude of an electric field and you throw in a charge in that electric field and you multiply them, you'll get the magnitude of the force that that charge will feel. So we throw in that charge here. Now that charge, because it's in this region of this electric field, we know it's going to feel force. What's the magnitude of the force that this charge feels? We just multiply those two values. So now if we were to multiply all these values, we would solve. We would now know. If we had this region with that particular electric field that we solved for, and we threw in a positive one Coulomb charge, it would feel a force. How strong of a force will this charge feel? 9 times 10 to 9 Newton force. And we know due to the charges, we know they're going to repel, so that force is going to be in this particular direction. And again, what if we had a region in this space, if we know the, uh, the strength of the electric field in this location, and we throw in a positive one Coulomb charge in this location, we know it'll feel a force. What's the magnitude of the force it'll feel? 1 times 10 to the 9 newtons. So that's one reason why when you throw in a positive Coulomb charge here, it's going to move in this direction. That's why it's going to repel and move in this direction, because it's feeling a force. It's feeling There's a force being exerted. This this charge created an electric field, so when we put through in this charge, it felt a force because it entered that electric field, so now it'll feel a force, and that's why it'll move in this direction. And again, another way you can think about it is, again, remember with our electric potential, re remember with our electric potential, essentially what happened is when we were dealing with the electric potentials, we knew if, if we threw in the positive Coulomb charge here, 
if we threw in a positive one coulomb charge in this region with this with this particular electric potential we know the system had a certain amount of energy in the form of electrical potential energy we saw we had this amount amount of energy in the form of electrical potential energy however what if we threw a positive one coulomb charge in this region of space with this electric potential we saw we would still have a system with energy but the amount of electrical potential energy we would have in this system is this amount and again if we threw a positive one coulomb charge in this region of this electric potential again we have a system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy how much energy this amount of energy so that also explains why we if we throw in a positive one coulomb charge here it will move in this direction why will it move in this direction because as it moves it goes to regions of lower energy it'll go to a lower energy state it'll, it'll go to be the system will have less energy in the form of electrical potential energy so it'll go in a lower energy state so that's one reason that's one way you can think of why if we throw a positive coulomb charge here it moves in this direction because as it moves it goes to a lower energy state that's energetically favorable and and again, you can think of it, it that way, or again, you can just simply think of it this way. If we throw in a positive one coulomb charge, it feels a force in this direction, so that's another that's another way you can look at it. That's another reason why it moves in that direction. But again, there are these two ways you can think about it. You can think of it in terms of electric fields, or you can think of it in terms of electric potential. Neither is right or wrong, they're just different ways of looking at it. And again, I recommend you just memorize this page. This really analyzes the units. This is how you get electric potential. This, this is how you get electric potential. And so if you know the electric potential in a region in space, and now you throw in a charge, you multiply them. Now you get the amount of joules, the amount of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So if we, if the point is, if we know region, we know the electric potential of a particular region in space, and we throw in a charge, we can just multiply them and we'll, it'll tell us how much energy in the form of electrical potential energy we have. And again, but there's another way you can think of it. We can use this equation, which tells us the magnitude of the electric field. So use this equation. Now we know the magnitude of the electric field in a particular location. So now if we throw in a charge in that particular electric field, we'll get a force. We just multiply them and we'll get a force. And again, these are other way, another way to look at the units. Again, based on the units of K, you'll see that these are the same thing. But again, if we know the magnitude of an electric field and we throw in a charge in that particular electric field, field, we'll get a force and we can determine the magnitude of the force.